getting another late start to today. Had a bunch of material runs to do and other details. Thankfully, I've got a new lock to install. Tested it before I left the store. And then we've got a bunch of tidy up to do from last night's project. taken me all morning, I guess, to edit this video, but it's a hum dinger. I think Jesse bought me new gloves. Is that correct? Jesse can't hear me. So I'm gonna go find out because I like new gloves. <gasps> what a sneaky snake. That doesn't look like you went to Home Depot, Jesse. Yay! That looks like my size. Do you desire my help up there? Or would you prefer that I work on other things down here? Yeah, help's good. Uh, oh, I forgot, can't get up here anymore. Gonna have to go around. Do you want the camera up here? Uh, sure. It's on top of the back of. Okay. Don't tell them how I got the secret camera angle. Oh. That's a secret angle. Okay. I'm supposed to try to figure it out. My, my, that is quite the angle. Oh, come on, camera. You wanted to explain something? Yeah, so I was gonna, I was going over to the sawmill because I was gonna cut some furring strips for this to create this kind of tight perimeter. And I looked over in the scrap pile, mm -hmm. like the pile of crap. Guess what? what? All those stupid little squaring cuts okay. that we made on the sawmill. Are perfect. Sweet. Had like, well, <laughs> to my credit, I think there was only about 10 of them. Which wow. means out of all the logs, I only make about 10 squaring cuts. <laughs> or I'm not even sure they're all squaring cuts, but anyway, they're all about, you know, half an inch, something like that. And some of them are really long. So instead of having to fire up the sawmill and make huh. these, I just dug it's them out of the scrap rad. pile. Yep. Yeah. And so that's going to work perfect. I was a miffed when we were making them and now I'm happy we did. So didn't have to make any more. In my mind, this side over here, I added about 20 inches of plastic. Uh, to kind of create a gutter. Yeah. Um, but I'm and I'm putting this furring over that, or scabbing over it. But in my mind, it needs a layer of tape between the plastic and the board, which is stupid. Like it's not going to work. But it'll just create a little flashing mm -hmm. for the water to go over. Because if it goes behind the board, it'll go behind the plastic and it'll go in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a consequence of this plastic not being as long as that side obviously so and be the tape queen yeah so i got like 50 flavors i got like the the variety pack of tape i'm just like don't one of these, smell one like of these, banana one of these well they did actually have like pink purple orange blue but i didn't get any of that i just got white I figured white was pretty good contrast to the black so i'd like to try the white duct tape first and see if it's got good adhesion if it doesn't I got super expensive extra adhesive duct tape, which probably sucks just as bad as the rest <laughs> of the stuff. So try the white stuff first. 
I'd also like to make a white border around that cleat or whatever for the ladder. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we don't keep tripping on that. And then maybe even make like My a white... future fat lip that I won't have thanks you. Your f yeah, future welt on your head. <laughs> um, and then maybe do the same thing around this plywood area over here. Yeah. Just so we kind of know where the plywood starts and stops. Because I think this plastic's going to be here for a while. And we'll probably remove snow from it and walk on it and a lot of stuff. So anything we can do to make it a little safer. I also noticed that the warm board on the edges is really sharp. So if you kind of work, wiggle on the plastic at all, it just cut cuts it. the plastic. Okay, so don't. So there's a couple spots like right there. The tape. plastic's already been cut. Need to tape that. So Okie dokie. get comfy with the tape. We're going to have a lot of taping to do until this is history. That's what I was thinking. Hey, nice. I was actually thinking of writing a word like boob or something. Bob. Boob. Bob. How about Bob? What you think of my my art? Nice. Bob, we only mess with you because we like you. Bob. Period. <laughs> Jesse wants to try to get these braces down. If you can't see them, that's because they're so high that they're probably not in focus. It's all the way up by that wedding bush that we do have, by the way. Um, so Jesse needs my help getting the extension ladder. This is scary. I think extension ladder's down somewhere right, right there. Oh crap. Okay. Um, I can go down there and I'll try to lift it up to you. Okay. Give me a hug. Oof. Are you good? Yep. Okay. This is screwed down right now. Yep. So we're going to need to do quite a bit of work to get this safe. Okay. We need to put another piece of plywood over here and put this between rafters and then we need to cleat the bottom so it doesn't kick out. So that's not gonna happen tonight. No. Like that's, that's too much for too tonight. dangerous, yep. That'll be fine for now. Need to do some work. Our new plan, we're gonna work together to get this taping done. I'm not sure how much white tape you bought. What? Man, depth perception's off. Can't really see it, but Alyssa's outlining our plywood stair opening in the dark so that when you're walking along here in the dark, you know that there's a plywood lip there and you're less likely to trip on it and go careening off the edge of the building. We also talked about just making a white strip around the whole edge of the building, just so it's really obvious where the edge is so you don't fall off. I'm gonna run out of tape quick though. Okay, I've got another white roll, I'll go grab it. This means there's power. And with power, we can now turn on the lights. So now we get to continue the video in the garage. It's kind of hard to explain, but Alyssa and I have been living in an RV in a garage for two years, or roughly four times longer than we thought. But we, wanted to build the right home for this property, not what we could afford at the time or just a get by structure. Funny thing is in the last two years, we've done exactly what we didn't really want to do, which is build a ton of temporary stuff, temporary infrastructure so that we could be here on our property working on it. We wanted to be here because we knew if we were here, we would learn things about it. We would get more work done. We'd be more in tune with it than if we were to live elsewhere, maybe get jobs, do that kind of thing, try to save up money. But probably the number one most stressful part about this whole journey has been being vulnerable. And probably the primary stressor is weather. Seems like we are constantly fighting weather. And 
Here we are, month number four into this house build, the physical building part. Tens of thousands of dollars, thousands of man hours, and we're still vulnerable to mother nature. Probably the most disconcerting, hey, photo bomber. Hey. I'm subtle. Hey, do you like the lights? Mm -hmm. um, quick detour for those people who have a short attention span like me. This side, Alyssa's dad did during the workshop. He wired all this. I wired this side, and then he did this a favor and connected the two up here. So there's one cord and 10 lights. That's pretty awesome. That is not what it says you're supposed to do on the box. But your dad said, I know better. It's okay. And I said, you're probably right, Paul. <laughs> anyway, this big puddle of water, this whole thing over here was a minimum of a three quarters of an inch deep. Even though we have a floor drain right there and a floor drain right here. So even though we've got this big, huge structure and all this money and all this time, we still are fighting nature. So getting this plastic on the roof is just a tiny mental relief so that we can do work in here. If you notice, that's tarped. The saw is tarped. Our tools are tarped. It's in our garage, but it's still vulnerable. We're trying to get our sit panels manufactured. We're still waiting for the final details with windows, etc. So those are being delayed, but we need to somewhat keep it dry in here so that we can store things in here ish and work. And it feels really good. Would you agree, Alyssa? Yeah. To have a not tarp screwed down barely, first time the wind comes up, rips it off. I think. I think it's extremely good for, for morale. I feel like yes. have, this is our space and it feels done-ish. We've worked so hard to create this space, but it still wasn't usable. It was just soaking wet. And the wind isn't really that big of a deal, but with the rain, which is mm -hmm. funny because two months ago, all we did was whine and snivel that we wish it would rain. And here we are, and now it's raining. So one of the things that we wanted to get done before the workshop uh, started was to get these posts that we installed over two months ago oiled so they were protected. This, um, this one's already. This one's crying. From this one's. Sealed yeah. Up. So there's a bunch of discoloration in this post from the hardware. I think that's probably from the steel. I don't know. Anyway, so getting some oil on these posts will help to protect them more. Hopefully they'll be thoroughly protected soon with SIPs. So this is going to work on that. And if you feel like this garage is a mess, you're correct. So I'm gonna take a little time and just clean things up, kind of get all these wood pieces all into the wood pile, etc. It'll feel really good mentally, I think, to have this place somewhat a useful workspace. We're gonna need to bring some uh, Not Your Fathers out here soon. Uh, I think that should be done first. <laughs> Jesse suggested I talk to you guys a little bit about the oil we're going to use to oil our beams. We have two different types of oil the Shelter Institute recommended to us. It's the Heritage brand. The first is an end grain. I don't even know that you'd call this an oil. Um, it's more of a wax. As you can see, it's extremely thick. Kind of looks like butter or margarine. And this is citrus based. It smells freaking amazing. And a very high wax ratio uh, to really help seal those ends. This is very similar to Anchor Seal. I don't know the difference, to be honest, but it's what Shelter Institute recommends, and it does smell a lot better, so there's that. And then the same brand is the, um, I guess the oil you use for the rest of the frame. Jesse said this has a combination of citrus, linoleum oil, and wax, but the wax percentage is much lower than what you'd use on the end grain. And Jesse said this is extremely expensive, except it's used for a reason. And on that note, I'm really excited to do this again. It's my nose's favorite task. Do you know if we rinsed these rollers out or the No. Okay. The oil, like it's they're not all oily from what I can tell. It's a pretty light oil. Uh-huh. So it'll all turn out and put it in the bucket like that. I don't think we need that much. Maybe a little more. Water's not tall enough. Wow. 
it's like immediate that the color pops. I know. So beautiful. <clears throat> I love that. Wow, the, wow! Look at the white on the red, whew! That's sapwood versus heartwood. Sassy. What a difference. So can you inform everyone when we need to oil frame again? Um, I think we want to wait until it's dried in because the weather is just going to negatively affect the oiling. Oh. And then after we do another oiling, how often should your frame be oiled? I don't think you oil ever again. Really? Yep. Huh. Twice is plenty. I mean, once the oil's there, it's going to do its job and was it's it, going to Was force. it Jamie saying that she had to oil the frame and it was expensive or something? No, that was the outside of her house. Oh. She had like a really nice, like a cedar shake siding, mm -hmm. but she had stained it like a super artsy color. And so it required tremendous amounts of upkeep. Wow, that post literally transformed. Wow. Incredible. Good job, love. You know if people do large timber frames? They probably do. Um, yeah, but getting the timber sizes that you want is more difficult mm -hmm. for like type of tree. larger trees, yeah. Old growth larch, I would think, is pretty hard to come by. It's probably all been cut. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that larches grow a little bit slower than for I think oiling is one of my favorite activities. Definitely satisfying. I'm pretty sure every woodworker would agree. <laughs> yep. One of the most popular posts on Instagram is people oiling like cutting boards and things like that that need to be oiled. We recently discovered a new flavor of Not Your Father's. They're calling it Mountain Ale. They're kind of trying to get after the other company who makes a mountain beverage. And as it stands right now, Jesse is in the lead by about that much and let's just keep an eye over time how Alyssa does but I bet she outruns me uh oh I just got her video uploaded for the night oh and then I found the pizza box mm -hmm. and your gloves were by it is there any correlation? Did you lose these? Does it have anything to do with this? You Why is there only one piece left? You wanna know what's really stupid? Yeah. I was just looking for my gloves. Really? I left the most delicious looking piece for you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am digging the like marinara-less pesto Latin mm -hmm. pizza right now. You know what's funny is I'm still hauling every single day. Mm -hmm. I love making dinner. I love nothing more than making healthy meals, mm -hmm. but I find myself still working even if I'm in the RV all day, we're trying to play catch up on stuff and videos, so. Yeah, I've been playing shuffle crap on this table for like a half an hour, but really? I'm slowly making headway. Yeah, nice. Like, I found out that the RSS screws fit in a peanut container, okay. which is perfect. And then I found out that the short ones wow. fit in a gelato <laughs> container. Good thing we have, we've eaten all this gelato, otherwise where would we put our screws? Actually, I was just thinking, I would never buy a container again in my life. I'd just buy gelato. Totally. Or peanuts. Yeah, why would you buy Looks a container good. with no gelato in it? Like, that's Who'd just pay money for an empty idiotic. container? That's crazy. Uh, and then some of the RSS <laughs> screws fit in the GRK box. Here's mm -hmm. my dinner. A little bit of meat and cheese. Yeah, so slowly making less chaos out of this table with the hope of removing it. But now I'm actually working on that uh, saw over there because the saw does not need to take up half the garage. No. It's a little dramatic. I might have poured the perfect amount of oil. Wouldn't that be something? you brought the tires home for the Subaru. Yeah. It's fair. Where would be out of the way? Anywhere. There's fine. I think I ran out of oil. I think I'm gonna have to pour a glug more. All done. And there's hardly enough oil to put back in, but I think I'm gonna try. It's all the waste. 
Done with the posts. Nice, good job. Did we want to do an unboxing still? Heck yeah, it's 6.15, okay. would do you we wanna, it? Um, Do you want to transfer to that now, or no. is there some more stuff you want to do? I'm still working on this. Okay. Pretty soon, pretty soon okay. we'll jump to that, but I want to get this mess organized, which I'm really close. Um, okay. So, I don't know, maybe check that off the list, look at mm -hmm. the to-do list and see if there's anything else in here that you could do. I know we wanted to sort the plywood, so yeah, we're close. That's all okay. I know, we're close. You know why I got those? <sighs> Hold on, the tripod's trying to get the best of me. So we can have a race. Really? Yeah. Like no this. fear. Looks like you're you're not keeping up. This one's mine. No, I I didn't even start till like an hour after. Right, excuses. Oh, I see why you. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm about I'm to totally round two, numb. and you're just man, you're losing your edge. I am losing my it's edge. Like not even not even college, Alyssa anymore. <laughs> All grown up, can't maintain. I know a certain kitty cat that would love to go in this box. Oh yeah. Huh? There she is. Nice, good job. This is like the very start of us moving out of our storage unit. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Are you cutting cardboard to place on the top so we don't lose things. Yeah, it's just a good shelf liner so that like you can put a lot of little stuff so it doesn't fall That's through a good the idea. cracks. It's amazing how even though I try to put things in containers you always have like oh, yeah. one or two stupid little things that you need to keep track of. So Jesse, huh. I won. What? <laughs> Normally I'm bad at finishing races so I have to steal the race in the beginning because yeah. I have such a poor finish. But this time it was the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> from behind, the race, yep. And now for the rewarding part. These fasteners. Uh oh. Here we go. Time to roll you to your new home. How's it? Oh, that's nice. Oh boy. Look what I found. What's that? What you got there? What in the world? It's coming to inspect what we've done this evening. Perfect. We're almost done. We're going to close up shop. Sorry, oh, Bugaboo. We have an unboxing. That's why he showed up. Oh no. Are we unboxing Bugaboo? Oh. He's being a little cuddly. Sorry, folks. The unboxing is going to be full of meowing. Yep. Bugaboo is a stereotypical Bengal. He is cliche. Has so much to say. Bengal. You wanna go in there? He wants to inspect that, sharpen his claws on that. Check that out. Inspect that. Double check those. <laughs> say something about this. 